first round of the competition, seen in the previous video, involved the teams giving a public presentation about their projects. The audience voted, and after the ballots were tallied, the win went to Grady Robotics. The flying portion of the competition was scored by a three-judge panel, consisting of Richard Hansen, the Government Affairs Director of the Academy of Model Aeronautics, as well as Tekkenstein of the Roswell Flight Test Crew, and yours truly, Lucidity. Roswell Flight Test Crew, we're still here in Eastern Oregon, continuing with the 2014 Finals for the Drone Prize. Sponsored by AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International, as well as our friends at Skyward and Aerial Technology International. This section is the competition that they're going to have to do a precision landing. They're going to detect invasive species using FPV, and they're looking for a lost person. Search and rescue. Excellent. Let's go see if they can pull it off. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome officially to the beginning of Drone Prize. Thank you all for being here to all of our teams. Congratulations. We've got Grady here in the red, and in the plain white tees, we've got Furman University, and we've got Furman University's John Conrad subbing in for to help out the three chicks on a drone and Debbie there. We have a target set out there behind you, as you can see behind you, the little pink square, where there's a tiny little star in the middle of that. And the goal is to have the aircraft perfectly centered on that. This exercise will be judged on three factors, one which we'll be judging on every one, which is safety, the second factor is how close you get to the target, we've got a tape measure, and the third factor is how much time it takes you to accomplish it. So congratulations to all, let's start flying. Great, thanks. Congratulations. Good luck, guys. Good job, guys. So in the precision landing exercise, I'm hovering and the craft is not. It's dropping and my observer is saying, go up, go up, and I'm pressing up and it's not going up and, and then it crashes. Oh, aircraft down. Not a good way to uh, land on a precision uh, target. <laughs> We're having some technical issues with this aircraft. So we're swapping out all the batteries, and so we're basically gonna, we're gonna give them a do-over and start fresh this time, now that the aircraft is hopefully up to snuff. John's great. He had great instructions, back and forth. Gave me a lot of confidence. He did great. It was really helpful. He did great. It was very okay, aircraft down, well done. Make her safe, we'll go out and take the measurement. 13 feet, 7 inches. I, for one, had thought the target would look a little different. Trying to think about how we wanted to approach the problem. We're looking at the quad and we're, we see the camera, we see that's a little bit off-center, and we're thinking, oh, how do we have to compensate for this? I don't know if you noticed, but they were measuring where the lens was relative to the center of the aircraft. <laughs> so. That's a, I'm anticipating a high degree of precision here. A little bit of wind picked up, so I was a little concerned as the pilot. From my perspective, it would look like I'm directly over the target. And no matter, like I keep moving it to where I think, and he keeps telling me, no. Forward, forward, a little bit to the right, a little bit to the right. All right. I just had to trust him that when we were over it, we were actually over it. One wonders if they're paying too big a price in terms of time for precision. Because I think we had really good communication. I could call out maneuvers and you would do exactly what I envisioned. Board to the left. Board drop down. The quad would move exactly where I thought it would. Boom! On the ground! Okay, what's time? Four minutes, ten seconds. Six and three-eighths. Six and three-eighths inches. Yep.
We weren't sure what to expect. We, I mean, we weren't keeping track of time. It was kind of, you know, intimidating. I was thinking that I really needed to make sure that my time was as low as possible and that I had the best precision. Essentially, I think we, I mean, we just kind of had a general plan. We pretty much said, Gabriel, fly as close as you can. We'll put the camera straight down. The gimbal wasn't quite right. We decided to get as close as we could to the ground, then turn the camera up so we could land perfectly. Change the camera's orientation now. now. Oh, you know, I bet they did. Yeah, I can see it looks like it's flat now. And uh, that was just about what our plan was, you know, just get Gabriel as close as he could, and then we could just look straight down and align it in the center. As I was talking to Sajad, we had great communication. Rotate to the right. Rotate clockwise. She's giving him right. yaw commands. Down. 131. Nine and five eighths. Yep. Nine and five eighths inches. I thought that we had a really good time. I wasn't necessarily sure, but I was really happy. Got an interesting conundrum here. I'd have to say that it's well, down to firm and agree. Yes, definitely. And is the inches trump speed though, I guess at this point. Mm -hmm. The white shirts had a little bit more attention to safety. Do they? Yeah. This group here, I though I don't have a problem with having a, a team of four. Um, they should have stepped back as, as the white, uh, white shirts guys did neither, but they should have stepped back and made sure that their people were set before they took off. Which one? Furman, Furman was closer by like three inches. It took four minutes to do it. Grady was only three inches further away, didn't mean a 30, but like you said, they weren't I, quite as strong on safety. That was what it came down to. Okay, I think we got a decision here. I kind of booked it back once we had 30 seconds, and uh, I got a little bit lucky as it started to get a little bit overhead. I realized just how fast it was actually coming back. Correcting roll the wrong way. 10 seconds. <laughs>